uh, hello everybody. Uh, my name is Dag Helge Hermundsgård and I'm a PhD uh, candidate uh, in chemistry at the University of Bergen. Um, <clears throat> I am enrolled in what is called a um, uh, industrial PhD, which means that uh, while I am not uh, employed by the University of Bergen, I am employed by a uh, industry company called Arbeflame. Uh, but I have ties with the University of Bergen through my supervisor, Tanja Bart, and uh, her uh, research group here in the university. Uh, and today I'm going to be talking about a uh, biorefinery approach to renewable energy and chemicals. Uh, so, <clears throat> as we all know, climate change is a looming threat to the whole world. And uh, in the most recent IPCC report, uh, they are saying that we are running out of time and we do need drastic change to meet uh, the clim global climate challenge we're facing. Uh, this means that uh, we need uh, a large uh, outfacing of uh, the fossil fuels, which currently cover around 80% of our global energy demand. Uh, and this is also steadily rising by year as more and more people are uh, getting uh, better um, uh, uh, living, uh, yeah, the cost of living is uh, increasing for people. Um, there are many promising and uh, innovative uh, technology, technological solutions to this problem. Uh, we have solar and wind and wave geothermal, uh, and all of these can uh, technically uh, cover a large part of uh, the uh, the energy demand, uh, but one uh, technology that is often overlooked, but is also a very promising technology, is that of biomass processing. Uh, the utilization of biomass uh, as an energy source have uh, several uh, different advantages over other renewables. Uh, for one, biomass energy can be handled very similarly to fossil fuels, and therefore uh, we can use much of the same infrastructure that is already in place with only minor, minor modifications. Uh, the second advantage is that while other renewable sources can cover the gap in energy demand that comes from the phasing out of fossil fuels, only biomass can also provide us with um, the chemicals we need in uh, the chemical industry uh, for uh, producing the materials we use in our modern life. Um, didn't switch there. So, <clears throat> what is a biorefinery? The concept of a biorefinery is uh, kind of a range of technologies, processes, and solutions that create the conditions to convert, you can use to convert biomass into a vast range of uh, products uh, that are green and climate friendly. Uh, a biorefinery can produce energy products like pellets or bio oils different commodity and fine chemicals. And also we can produce uh, feed products and food additives and many other materials. <clears throat> uh, the key use of the binary biorefinery is maximizing the potential value of the raw material uh, and uh, becoming more resource efficient through valorizing side streams uh, and the use of uh, waste products from other industries as raw materials in the biorefinery. And this also then uh, works into the, the circular economy of, uh, of, of uh, our natural resources. Uh, so I'm gonna talk a little bit about Arborflame, which is the company I'm employed at and do my work for. So Arborflame is a Norwegian biotech company that has developed a uh, wood-based energy pellet that they call Arbocore. Uh, these black pellets are kind of an evolution of uh, traditional white pellets. Uh, those you may know from uh, heating in uh, public and even private uh, buildings, also uh, as an alternative to traditional fireplaces. Uh, these black pellets have a higher energy density than these white pellets, and through uh, thermochemical pretreatment, <coughs> the um, the biomass have developed kind of a coating 
uh, on the wood particles. And when these are pressed pellets, we get an, a pellet that is uh, extremely durable in respect to water resistance and also like physical stress, meaning that you can store it and transport it like we would coal without needing a uh, large um, infrastructure to like keep it dry and keep it uh, safe. <clears throat> uh, this uh, relatively new technology has made it possible to develop a more uh, complete biorefinery around this uh, pellet production uh, with the goal of complete utilization of all side streams in the production. Uh, in addition to producing black energy pellets, we are working on extracting value from different side streams that or originate from the uh, pellet processing process, including extraction of valuable chemicals uh, from the uh, different side streams uh, that original and originate there, uh, and also converting residual sugars into single cell proteins that can be used, for example, to feed fish. And uh, since the fish farming industry is, uh, or the fishing export is uh, very large in Norway, uh, it would be uh, very beneficial to uh, not have to rely on uh, import, the importation of soy from, uh, from other countries, both in uh, economic sense and also in the uh, cutting the emissions that we get from the, having to transport vast amounts of uh, fish feed across the world. Uh, so in my PhD work with Arb Flame, uh, I mostly work on uh, valorization of side streams from the pellet production. Uh, and also investigation of what products can be extracted from the side streams and uh, how we can increase the overall overall value of the process and also how this process can be optimized to yield the most desirable product mix without compromising quality on the um, Arbacore pellets. <clears throat> so uh, Arbon that you can see in the picture. It is uh, Arboflame's first commercial uh, pellet production factory, and then also maybe the first commercial biorefinery. Uh, they produce Arbacore pellets and they are located outside of uh, Kongsberg, not uh, Kongsvinger, sorry, uh, in uh, southeastern Norway. These are right on by the border to Sweden and is close to the Norwegian forestry industry, providing easy access to uh, biomass and uh, raw material. Uh, Arbor One is the first step in a uh, project uh, setting up a full scale biorefinery. Uh, the plant has a production capacity of uh, 70,000 tons a year of pellets. <clears throat> and we can also extract some. Uh, final chemicals from the uh, project side process side streams. Um, the plant generates some of its power from its own byproducts uh, like methanol and methane uh, that also reduces some of the uh, need for external energy output and the plant is kind of a blueprint for f future plants using it to uh, find out what equipment is best, what procedures are best suited for the job, and how we can incorporate further technologies, strategies into the biorefinery concept. <clears throat> um, the greater goal for Arborflame is to establish these kind of uh, pelleting uh, biorefineries around the, at locations around, locations around the world uh, to be able to easily deliver pellets to coal fire power plants. And these pellets then can uh, be used to replace coal. Uh, <clears throat> and of course, in the ongoing fight against climate uh, challenges, this technology can be essential in cutting emissions from coal power. Uh, this also requires some adaption uh, since feedstocks will differ around the world. Uh, some uh, other wood species may be dominant or maybe we don't have uh, the same technologies can be used everywhere. Uh, so <clears throat> as for now, the main feedstock is wood chips from Scandinavian sawmills, focusing mainly on spruce and pine. Uh, but uh, we want to uh, 
increase the scope to be able to use different types of uh, wood uh, feeds and also maybe uh, we more could use more uh, forestry residues and uh, other other feedstock. Uh, recently, Arbor Flame has made some agreements with the Romanian Energy Department, so they plan to set up uh, pelleting plants then around the world, and this process is already started. So to make Arbor Core pellets, we take small wood chips that are dried, uh, as you see on the left side there. Uh, these are fed into a reactor together with saturated steam at pressures around 20 to 30 bar. Um, <clears throat> And these give us reaction temperatures above 200 degrees. Uh, the reaction is then held for a couple of minutes uh, to promote the uh, hydrolysis uh, of the hemicellulose uh, before being released in an explosive decompression. During the decompression steps, the uh, wood fibers kind of uh, rupture and uh, uh, we get uh, a couple of depolymerization reactions that occur in the cellulose, hemicellulose, and also to an extent in the lignin polymer. Uh, the, this uh, physiochemical process then breaks down the, uh, the lignocellulosic material and also hydrolyzes sugar molecules into some of the uh, chemicals that we can extract later. Uh, when the biomass treatment is complete, the treated wood is emptied from the reactor. Uh, this is a process. Uh, this reaction is a process that has to take place in batch steps. So we have several uh, reactors working in sort of sequence. So it, we, we have a continuous uh, feed in and continuous product out. Uh, but the reactions itself is batch based. <coughs> Uh, and the finished product you can see here on the right. It's a, you get the, the brown color, and these are then uh, uh, degraded, uh, depolymerized uh, wood fibers. Uh, yeah. Uh, also, uh, the chemicals produced in this process, some of them will escape through uh, steam, as, as steam, with the uh, uh, the uh, decompression step, meaning that we can uh, extract these chemicals from the wastewater or steam that we condense afterwards. <coughs> uh, so uh, these are what uh, the arbocore pellets look like. Uh, after collecting the biomass, uh, it is dried and then processed into these pellets, pressed into these pellets. Uh, the pellets have the advantage of having very similar properties as coal. Uh, they can easily be transported, stored without absorbing water, and they have an energy density around 20 gigajoules per ton, which is about three-fourths that of coal. Uh, the pellets can also be pulverized in the uh, um, same way that you would uh, pulverize coal in a coal power plant. Uh, so you don't have to, like making the energy, the transition from a coal fire power plant to a pellet fired power plant, uh, it's very small. Uh, and so it's both cost and time efficient. And uh, of course, this saves both a lot of money and also a lot of time in the transition process from fossil fuels. <coughs> So the extraction of valuable chemicals from the side streams. Uh, an important aspect of uh, the energy production from the biomass is uh, that it is not only an energy, energy source, but also a source of chemical compounds. Uh, if we are to move away from fossil fuels, uh, we can generate energy with solar and wind, but we can only get uh, chemicals from biomass. And although it is important, of course, to have a uh, diverse energy mix and then use all the technology available, we can, of course, not just cut out biomass energy because we wouldn't have the, the chemicals we need. Uh, so all these things we can do separately. We can produce pellets, we can 
um, derive chemicals from biomass and we can produce fish feed. All these things can be done separately, but by combining them all into the binary refinery concept and uh, doing them all in one place from the same raw material, uh, we kind of uh, cut a lot of costs, both transportation wise and also uh, production costs like energy costs, for example. Uh, in our one plant, in the Arbor one plant, <clears throat> we take the collected, collected the wastewater stream from the steam explosion and we can extract valuable chemicals from it. Uh, discovering this also provides a kind of an incentive for chemical isolation as the easiest way to clean the wastewater would be to uh, remove the chemicals and uh, release it back into nature uh, and this can be done more cost efficiently if we can if we can use the, the chemicals we extract from the process uh, most of the organic compounds in the wastewater are removed by distillation in the distillation tower you see in the picture uh, and the rest are um, <coughs> sorry um, the rest uh, are mostly organic acids that are uh, uh, removed by bacterial uh, digestion, which also produces methane, which, uh, as I said, we can use to burn as fuel in the power plant. Uh, so um, our main valuable products as of now uh, from this process is the furans, like furfural. Uh, Furfural is a much used platform chemical, meaning it is used as a base or a starting point for creating a lot of other compounds. Uh, you can use it to make everything from food additives, adhesives, plastics, fuels, pharmaceuticals. Uh, yeah, the list goes on. Uh, another important furan we can extract from the process uh, is HMF, uh, which can be obtained along with other compounds by kind of washing or extracting the uh, biomass, extracting the compound compounds from the biomass after the uh, steam explosion. Uh, so we also work on extracting a larger range of compounds uh, that are found in mainly smaller amounts in the wastewater stream. Uh, and we then hope to in the future be able to uh, utilize even more of the uh, the products from this uh, the biomass. Uh, in the end I want to talk a little bit about uh, research and funding. So I work uh, as part of a larger research team that includes uh, researchers from a lot of uh, research institutions both inside and outside Norway. Uh, and our research is, uh, yeah, I want to say also that we have then a large, uh, a wide range of expertise in this field, both in uh, chemical processing and also in uh, just like base chemistry. Uh, and the research is funded through several projects, like the EU's Horizon 2020 project, it funds the Arba Heat project, focusing on coal power conversion to uh, pellet uh, plants. And <clears throat> the Norwegian Research Council funds uh, some of our projects like Arba Bioref and Arba Feed that works toward extraction of value-added chemicals from side streams and also bioprocessing of uh, residual sugars to into, for example, fish feed. Uh, and NFR is also together with Arba Flame funding by PhD projects uh, project them more directly. So thank you for your attention. Mm -hmm.